Welcome back to the port. I'm the Gav Major and this is Amateur Reports. Amateur Reports is your gameplay with my commentary. This is a submission from Eternal Abyss and he is playing the Tech Tree Tier 6 French Destroyer Aquilin. Now this is a game of domination on Sleeping Giant. On the friendly team there's a Guidi, Icarus, Z39, Aquilin, which is Eternal Abyss, uh, Benson, Matsu, Queen Elizabeth, New Mexico and Snob. On the enemy team, there's a T61, a Mahan, a Minsk, an Akasuki, a Jervis, a Fuso, a Warspite, a New Mexico, and a King George V, with the T61 and the Warspite being in the division. Now, Turn of have spawned on the center right spawn. Um, it seems like on Sleeping Giant, the spawns are quite heavily laden on the eastern or the right side of the map, uh, depending on how you look at it. Um, best way to look at it is a compass and say the east side. For some reason it seems to spawn quite a, six ships about this location and then three over on the other side so it does mean that you end up with quite heavy um, enemy and friendly pushes happening over the CD objective when it has the, um, the cock and balls arrangement or um, the C objective when you have the uh, three objectives in the row. Now, um, Return of Abyss has uh, moved over to the right uh, with the intention of pushing up and grabbing Objective C. Now, there is a guide on uh, Eternal Abyss's team which does spam away on the command wheel for most of the game. game. Um, his favourite uh, command appears to be I'm detected. <laughs> and um, yeah, he just he gets spammed all the time. And this is one of the downsides with, um, with the command wheel. It's a shame that. Um, there wasn't an ability to actually mute people from using uh, from hearing their uh, command will um, if if they're annoying you basically. So as the terminal base pushes in here, the enemy Jervis does get spotted, and so he um, gets himself in the position because you have to have quite a wide stance with the faculty in order to bring all five guns on the target, and he gets the engine uh, the main battery relay booster on to um, wither away on the Jervis. Now, even though the Jervis does try and pop a smoke screen shortly, um, he is spotted by the sonar of the friendly Z39. And first blood goes to the New Mexico. So that's one enemy destroyer annihilated quite quickly into the game. Now, uh, the friendly team has started to flip Brava objective, however, it looks like the enemy destroyers are also harassing into the Bravo objective as well. So up ahead we have a King George V class battleship. We also have a War Spite and a New Mexico. Uh, things, uh, friendly Benson uh, gets uh, killed off in the Bravo objective and the enemy do start to flip the Bravo objective. Now, Eternal Abyss, um, his ship modules and command build is down in the description, but for ship modules wise, he has gone for aiming systems module 2, propulsion systems module 2, and a concealment systems module 1. So he has gone for the improved uh, torpedo traverse speed, main battery dispersion, um, acceleration speed to get to top speed, and then also reduced uh, detectability at sea. Uh, which is massively required, um, that additional minus 10% uh, on the concealment is very very much required on these French destroyers. So any enemy Minsk also turns up. Now there's two friendly destroyers uh, with Eternal Abyss here at the moment. There's the friendly Z39 and the friendly Icarus. So get some shots, shots down range on the enemy Minsk. Uh, Minsk does set a fire on Eternal Abyss, but he is a. Uh, it's worth getting that damage con uh, sorted quite quickly on the destroyer because you don't have the very high HP pool, and then also when you do catch fire, your detectability at sea, or when you're firing your guns, is increased by two kilometers. The same with air being set by aircraft. So there's New Mexico, get some torpedoes out, and it looks like the Minsk does have a, uh, the twist and track or the RDF ability. So um, every now and then you'll see that Eternal Base is uh, popped up with the located symbol. And basically what this means is the Minsk is basically being told that um, Eternal Base is the nearest enemy ship to him. 
losing our rudder there, um, taking a bit of fire. Now, ooh, devastating strike on the New Mexico. Um, a tip for you guys in battleships, stop sailing in straight lines. You make yourself very predictable for torpedoes. Now, um, for his commander, um, he has gone for Philip Abion. Um, and the skills he's taken has been subsurface venture, fragile threat, standoff for destroy or be destroyed, and unstoppable. Um, now this is very similar to um, what I recommended uh, when I did my French commander comparison. Uh, for his inspirations, he has gone for Eric Bay for the additional concealment, um, which is probably going to be required. And then he's also gone for Violetti, so um, basically reducing the time that you're detected after firing your main guns. So now all that leaves in the vicinity is the Minsk and the War Spite. Now remember the War Spite is working in a division with the T-61, so it's strange that the T-61 isn't in the vicinity of his fellow division mate. And get in a torpedo hit on the War Spite. And the nice one with these French torpedoes is that they do hit very hard against targets. It does make these destroyers very effective battleship hunters. Now the friendly Z-39 is taking advantage of his smokescreen. Um, knowing that Eternibus can't pop a smokescreen due to being a French destroyer, um, Eternibus is basically in a position where he can only spot uh, the enemy targets while the Z-39 takes advantage of his smokescreen. Now, at the moment, um, the enemy team does have a one-ship lead, uh, however, the uh, friendly team does have a capture point lead over the enemy. So there's the Minsk, and of course the Minsk is probably just using his RDF ability to keep probing out and seeing what you can see. Now, a friendly Snop is pushing into the Charlie objective, uh, wisely or wrongly. And here Eternal Abyss is identifying the Minsk as the priority target, as obviously the Minsk is hunting them down, and Eternal Abyss can't really risk uh, making an engagement with only 3,197 HP left, but he takes a punt at it, um, simply because he is coming up to this island and he is at a range where his maneuverability is just enough to actually be able to dodge incoming shots. He's just staying aware of where those shots are coming from and then dropping off from behind the island. Now here at the KG-5, um, whether or not he's going to be sailing a predictable path, it looks like he's coming straight down because he's coming up against the snob. And I think here Turnbus considers to switch around to bring the torpedoes on the other wing launcher around but uh, it decides against it just because it would take because the rudder shift in the turning circle on the french destroyers isn't that great it would take a considerable amount of turning to just bring another three torpedoes onto target so at the moment um there's not much in between the scores, it's very close, um, but Eternobus is probably going to start making a push towards the central objective. I mean, his team is just holding a point advantage and it's, it's creeping up now as they've obviously have one additional objective over the other team. And he's taking advantage of being behind this island in order to get a quick body out on the enemy battleship. Now looking at the map, uh, it doesn't look like there's going to be many enemies in the vicinity of the uh, Bravo objective. And the enemy currently has a two ship advantage, one ship advantage now. And the enemy T T61 is now gone. So considering the T61 was working with the War Spite, um, they are not really working in the same vicinity of each other. Um, it's quite amusing to think that the war spikes up at the north of the uh, northeast of the map, and then the T61 has just died at the southwest of the map. 
So now capturing the objective in the center and um, whoever's the closest ship to the enemy Minsk uh, keeps switching between the terminal distance Backlin and the Z-39 and the KG-5 burns out the uh, Snop. So now there's only three destroyers left on the terminal business team versus two destroyers and three battleships. The enemy team uh, currently consists of a Akasuki and a Minsk Fuso, a King George V and a War Spite, and then the Eternal Business uh, team consists of a uh, Vakralin Z39 and a Guidi. And the enemy starts to flip the Alpha objective just as Eternal Abyss is flip just finally flipping the Bravo objective. So now they have a free um, capture point advantage over the enemy team. Now you saw earlier that um, Eternal Abyss managed to just Chuck off some speculative torpedoes in the general direction of where the Minsk is coming from, but unfortunately the Minsk has actually come around the other side of the island. And it's time to get a couple of those 5.5 inch guns down range. Now with the French, they do have three rearward facing turrets, their X, Y and Q turret, so therefore they do have a reasonable amount of DPM when it comes to actually trying to break off an engagement. Thankfully the Gaidi, which has spent most of the game spamming the uh, command wheel, has now actually pushed up alongside. So this uh, spreads it spreads the pain out um, as the Minsk canal switches targets. It also allows um, the to actually push in around the back of the s smoke of the Gaidi. And then the Z-39 is starting to cross from Charlie into the Bravo objective area. Now there's some torpedoes coming in here and the first thought is, are they going to be the Minsk torpedoes? But you have to remember that the Minsk only has 4 kilometer torpedoes. And those torpedoes just keep coming along, which makes me think that they're not Russian, and that they're probably Japanese, so what that means is the enemy Akasuki is actually in that kind of vicinity of where the Minsk is, and uh, there she is. So it's time to um, push this engagement. Uh, the Akasuki seems to be distracted with the Gaidi, so more reason to take advantage while you can, especially considering how quickly the Akasuki can be chunked apart with the uh, 6 inch guns from the Gaidi and the 5.5 inch guns from the uh, Vakralin. And the friendly Gaidi is gone, but the enemy Akasuki is also gone. And we can see how, how little health the enemy Minsk is actually on. Ideally, yes, it would be nice to have the Z39 break off, but I think he's a little bit too possibly overextended. But if we look at the points at about now, um, as it just changes as the Z39 dam sinks, uh, the point advantage is uh, quite significant. We're looking at about 150-ish, maybe probably more than that. Just trying to do a quick quick off the, uh, off the cuff look at it. And there's only a minute and 30 seconds left. So even though the enemy is flipping the Charlie objective and the Marvel objective, they're not in a position to actually be able to win this um, from where they are. They are really going to have to uh, seek out Eternal Abyss and um, kill him. And there's only actually one enemy ship on the enemy team that is capable of doing that, and that is the Minsk, uh, due to the Minsk having the twist and track ability, so he's able to obviously keep hunting um, Eternal Abyss and we are entering the last minute of the game now I think those torpedoes would just launch a speculative, tor speculative torpedoes in case the Minx uh, does come around that corner and take an uh, advantageous uh, punt at the Fuso Now this is where it would have been nice for the French um, destroyer commanders to have the 
Oh, at least one of them have that twist and track ability. Just to know where that's the enemy's coming from. Oh, there's the enemy Minsk. Get those shots out. There she goes. Now this is slow mo, so now watch this. Four, three, two, one, zero. <laughs> Only milliseconds too late in order to catch um, the victory almost for the enemy team as uh, Tunnel Abyss earns himself a solo warrior and moves his campaign on a little bit. Uh, now going on to the end screen, we are looking at only 67,000 damage, 4 torpedo hits um, and 51 shell hits, um, getting 3 kills there though at the end, uh, earning himself a devastating strike against the uh, enemy New Mexico and a solo warrior there, even though he died probably like 0 0.01 seconds after the countdown finished. Uh, the wall spite must have been frothing at the mouth at the thought of having um, lost that game by that margin. Uh, now going on to the um, team table, uh, you can see that Tenebus has come out the top of the team with about a thousand ship XP more, uh, about 1200 ship XP more than the next best player on his team. Um, and the friendly Icarus um, that was alongside Eternal Abyss at the start um, comes in the bottom. Um, but yeah, it's quite amusing the distribution of those drawers. You've got two at the bottom, one, one above mid table, and then two at the top. Uh, on the enemy team, the Minsk uh, obviously pulled his weight quite nicely. Uh, so did the War Spite, um, obviously, seeing himself. Um, does it even count it? Free? Yeah, it does count it. So uh, the War Spite does actually. Get awarded the kill for at the uh, very last second and uh, is therefore awarded points for it even though the game has finished uh, which is quite amusing to think and uh, then going on to the economy tab uh, we can see that Tenovis has managed to make uh, 263,000 uh, credits out of that game the ship cost was um, 106,000 credits so all in all uh, made himself a pretty penny well, um, as I mentioned, the commander build and the ship modules used by Eternal Abyss during this game is going to be down in the description, along with our email address. Do you have any of your own game captures that you'd like to submit, whether for Amateur Reports, which is my uh, your gameplay of my commentary, or um, Sea Trials, where it's your gameplay with tactical overlays, where I um, highlight either things that you could improve if that's what you want me to do, or it could be just showcase some of your, um, your strategies and things like that if that's what you want me to do. Well, if you've enjoyed the video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. And if you aren't already subscribed, then I'd like to say thank you very much, guys. I've been the Gallifrey Major, and back to the port.